Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take a midweek break to cover all the fascinating stuff going on in the world of Linux in under 30 minutes or more, guaranteed. And this week is no exception because RetroPie ended up getting trademarked by another company, and Stacer releases an Ubuntu system optimizer, and guess what? It's borderline useful. Skype introduces video calling. Yeah, you heard me. And NVIDIA increases the GPU VRAM throughput by, and I'm not kidding, disabling a ROP and its associated memory bus. Mozilla acquires pockets, and they also have plans to open source it. And um, she one got a collision, but who cares? I mean, at least Linus Dovrold doesn't care. Well, hey man, um, what Linus says is word, but let's just get right into this, this retro pie. It's not a slice of pie, this is more of a PSA. They want to say thanks for the support, because last week they're like, hey man, we need some legal help. Turned out a USA um, company, a third party, they trademarked retro pie, and this is not like a hipster pie banking company that does 16-bit and 8-bit characters on their pie. No, they're like no. selling retro pies and stuff like that. So... You know, if you're a lawyer, know anyone, they have a thing, get in contact with them. This will be in the show notes, but they said we had a ton of support. And this is going to surely get sorted. We don't have to worry about it. I just hate that they have to go through it. Um, uh, I, mean, I mean, it takes some serious, uh, I don't know, stupidity, ballsiness, whatever you want to call it, to actually take an, a recognizable name. Because retro. let's face it, RetroPie is actually pretty recognizable. How do you take that and just mm -hmm. trademark it and start doing stuff with that particular trademark in the U.S. I don't know, because they were dorks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, oh, you make this? I bet this. <laughs> 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 no, it's exactly like this. I mean, those, those people have no shame. And how do they think it's going to end anyway? I mean, they're going, they, they sell those devices on eBay. So I've tried to look around and try to find those people selling retro buys. I couldn't find them, but surely if they they do sell something, they will get like negative reviews, like tons of negative reviews, and they're, they're going to be flagged pretty much everywhere. It's not going to work out, mm -hmm. even without the lawsuits and everything. Okay. So How? Why, why did you do that? Let's get into this proper um, Torvalds, yes. Shaw 1 and get the sky isn't falling, question mark? Really? Yeah, so uh, last week there were some people at Google discovered that uh, the SHA-1 algorithm for en encryption uh, could, well, you could generate collisions for, for this, which means that one document could have the same uh, checksum that, than another valid document. And uh, Git uses the same algorithm for its repos, but it's not really a big issue because, I mean, for, for Git, you see the, the source code. If someone introduces some malicious source code into the repo, it's going to be very obvious that someone did. And also, the, the, the attack is kind of expensive still. It's way less expensive than brute force. I think it's a hundred thousand times less expensive to compute than like just doing brute force but still it needs um 600 6500 6, years of cpu uh for what for one cpu it takes that time and 10 hundred and uh 110 years for a uh, for a gpu to, to crack well, to why doesn't that terrify collision. you don't you watch doctor who <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i mean unless unless you google then no, you don't have the means to to calculate those kind of attacks. Yeah, no, you need a pretty serious box if you're going to try and collide SHA-1 uh, checksums to fool someone into downloading a compromised file when it's actually, you know, it's not the file that people are looking for. That said, why are you still using SHA-1? Stop! Please. Uh, I, I don't know. Even Stop. the Googs have, have they've been trying to push the SHA-256. And I, I don't know. It's like the GitHub solution here was like, yep, we're not moving to 256 <laughs> until it's too late. And SHA-1's blown wide open because that's the uh, ticket, sir. That's the ticket that'll... Um, yeah, uh, but yeah. no, I mean, 12 volts has a has a good point. And uh, yes, that, that works very well with open source stuff, but not so well with the closed source stuff. But we yeah, will I know, see. I know that the, um, 
the, Lena, the Ubuntu and Debian repos, they've switched from, well, they are in the process of switching from uh, Share Sh 1 to Share 2, 256 uh, something, I think. Uh, if you still SHA have two fifty six or SHA three, those are the or, ones. Yeah, yeah, and if you still have those SHA one repos, they will give you a big fat warning and they won't work anymore. Okay, well, let's talk yeah. about our favorite failure. I mean, uh, let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> but that thing we keep relying on because hey, guess what? It still works. But no, this is the new one, the one that doesn't work as we wanted to anyway. Uh, this is the, it's now no longer the Skype for Linux Alpha. It's the Skype for Linux Beta, and it comes with video call support. Yes, because uh, Microsoft went out of their way to break WebRTC video calling just so they could release a GIMP version of Skype for Linux. Good on you, Microsoft. That worked out well, didn't it? One yeah. of the things I saw so, about this latest beta is that you can finally call Mac and Windows users. Which, yeah, I was like, okay, that that's genuinely going to help this particular show out because it is, it is very difficult to get guests on. Like, you got to run a Linux Pro, and they're like, we don't know if that's going to happen. And, you mm -hmm. know, um, I, I know um, Josh over at PC Pro is happy because he pinged me halfway through this day, I think, at noon. And he's like, when, when's that dirt game coming out? We need to play some dirt. So we'll, we'll definitely do some stuff with that. Um what are the other things they threw in here just for good fun? Oh, they uh, they added the ability to pay the money. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now you can call mobiles and landlines with Skype credit because that's what everyone was clamoring for when at Microsoft. The biggest The ability issue, to pay you money. The biggest issue, we, I have not had a chance because this just came out today to test this. And the biggest issue that we've been having with these um, alpha and now the beta is it sounds atrocious compared to yeah. old Skype, which was not developed by Microsoft. Strider, are you happy? Um, I'm indifferent, I would say. Uh, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's making progress. Maybe someday. I, I mean, I'm not. I, I think I've listened too much metal to <laughs> notice the sound difference uh, between the old Skype and new Skype. Okay. I, that, <laughs> that's, yeah, I mean, um, I wish we could find some something better than Skype, like maybe Wire? Wire is good? We've tried it. Um, yeah, we tried well, it. Have you tried it like this this year? I'm trying it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, um, Stacer. Yeah, it's a Ubuntu system optimizer. And I looked at this and I was like, man, I don't know. It's got, it's got like the sparkly hairdo and the cowboy boots. It's being fancy. And I was like, ooh, SourceForge. Ick. But fortunately, I decided to give it an install and check it out. And what can it do? Well, you know, it can show your CPU, memory, disk usage, you know, network monitor. It's a, well, I kind of really wanted to hate on it for being a Tonkatori GUI, but it's kind of all right. And actually, the um, system cleaner, I was like, oh, that's helpful. Well, it's borderline helpful because it reminded me that I hadn't cleared out app cache in <laughs> forever. And it also has a thing, I use XFCE's version of this, but for your startup apps, I mean, it's wicked simple, maybe for, and look, services are set up there. For your new Linux user that really doesn't want to go digging around, then I think it's well put together and it seems reasonably clean enough. Strider, why do you hate it? Uh, I don't hate it. Uh, it's well done. It's pretty. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm just trying it now uh just once more because uh, yesterday i was testing it and i must have forgot i had entered the password but it was doing all this root stuff without ask, asking me for the the root password so i found it weird but i must have entered it once and it um, kept it in memory uh i've tried it here like right now and it does ask you for the root password but yeah because it does all this system stuff like clearing up uh, logs, it cleaning the app cache. Uh, let's see, it can enable or disable s services like systemd stuff. Uh, it can enable or disable uh, startup uh, so apps. So you're saying someone actually made a decent working version of CCleaner, uh, CCleaner the Windows uh, software for Linux that isn't just a completely pointless thing. That's good. It's Finally. it's not just a cleaner. I mean, it's also a monitor. It can like monitor your RAM, your CPU, your disk. Um, 
and it shows you some statistics and everything. So it's not only to, to clean stuff. But yeah, I mean, the only thing that's like amused me is was like amounts of banners there are on this GitHub page. <laughs> <laughs> like, they have all these li different badges, like for the build and everything. And then they have the, the badges for the, the websites. They got reviews on. There's, there must be like 15 of them. And then when you get a YOLO, you get a YOLO hard, but um, mm -hmm. how about another um, PDA Android Linux keyboard thingy? Hmm? Hey, it's probably a good time to be doing this considering how the GPD pocket is doing. Yep, this is another Indiegogo campaign for a device which is not currently available. And as far as we know, they don't really have a working prototype just yet. Now, they did have, and before Monster Cameron gets all up in my grill, um... They did have a crappy 3D printed uh, plastic mock-up. It looks really, really bad. And no, it wasn't a working prototype. Uh, they had it to, to your credit. They're going out of their way to open this thing and not show a screen. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> no, they they had a like that mock-up. They had it at the uh, Mobile World Conference, uh, the MWC 2017. So. If you were at MWC and you would like to, say, pre-order one, please don't do that. You can give them money and you can get a unit for 350 mm -hmm. US dollars plus shipping. You will still have to pay shipping on the side. And it is, it is very much a smartphone with a keyboard attached that you can fold onto itself. Oh, wait, I have a phone that kind of works like that, except it's not a QWERTY keyboard. It's just a phone, yes. Now this uh, is, I guess, as Strider called it in the notes, it's the resurgence of the PDA. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, we haven't seen those in years. And yeah, it's like a comeback from the, the 90s. Um, the, or, the, the, so one thing struck me is like they have three CPUs and 10 cores in total. Will that be enough? Are you sure this is going to be enough for your phone? <laughs> that's that's a, that's a lot. I mean, I'm not Let's against see. it. That's, oh, that's most phones usually have two. Uh, there's a big. Uh, they have uh, big cores and small cores. They do a big little for yeah, energy maybe. savings. Yeah, the big littles. <laughs> but it looks really neat. I mean, it's not overpriced, so it's coming at like uh, 300 or 350 for the 4G version. So, yeah, it's okay on the price. Uh, it seems to be okay on the performance. The only thing that worries me, it's got like this super sharp uh, HD display. So, it, I think it's like something like 4K or something. It's 1440. And, uh, yeah. Currently, if not everything on Linux works really well with 4K or high DPI. Yeah, it's definitely oh. something. I mean, I was looking at that, and it's like as an early adopter of UHD 30 or 40 by 2160, it's not really 4K. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, Linux can barely UHD, bro. It kind of works, but there's so many situations even here that, I, that there's yeah, big and you, you, glaring you issues. Yeah, and you got a 28-inch monitor, and mm -hmm. imagine if you had the same thing on a 5-inch monitor. It would be glorious. That's what it would be. <laughs> Some of the specs I'm reading about this. Now the, now, the big take from this is you can run Android, and it will have 4G, or you can also run Linux on it, apparently. So it means it'll be somewhat unlocked. But I was reading through the specs. I um, just want to give this a quick rundown. It says mechanical keyboard on this device. Really? <laughs> I mean, well, I guess a chiclet keyboard counts as mechanical, I, right? I, I hope that's the case because they're like, yeah, it's really <laughs> clacky. It's like, geez, man, does this thing come with the point of Newcastle and a fixie, man? Um, it has a dedicated button for voice commands. And I was like, hey, Android already has a button. It's called OK Google. That's a button. Yep. And, you know, Linux doesn't have a voice assistant. And Ah, uh, yeah, it does. What about Minecraft? What about it? <laughs> and... and Two weeks of standby time and 12 hours of talk by um, talk time. Now, I was reading your page. Standby is not hyphenated, guys. You want to fix that. Um, I want to know how many hours of being a useful device time it will provide. That's a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. And to close off on this, they're hoping to assemble Gemini in the UK. And you think manufacturing in America is going to be cost prohibitive. <laughs> Ooh, I, I don't know. Interesting project, reasonably priced. We got to wait more. I, I got to see one running before 
yeah. I can put a whole lot of faith in it. But um, this will be in our show notes. What are they currently and at? They've already, yeah, they, they're it. already at 115 percent of their goal. Stop Good. reordering oh, things, people. Come on, 118 percent. Mm-hmm. So I guess, I'm guessing that people are still buying this like crazy. Up next, um, Mozilla Yoink something. Yeah, Hello. so I think that's, this is this the first time Mozilla acquires uh, a full company. Yes. So they acquired uh, Pocket, uh, which is something you you it's a browser extension or websites, however you use it. One that a lot of Linux users were angry about that it was sucking their information. Um, they might have done something like this, yeah. Uh, so you you use it to to keep some white pages you want to read later, and it puts it form, formats them into a, like a clean web page, like a blank page you can read on your phone or your tablets. I um, mean, it, it's neat. I use it from uh, from time to time, um, and it was a closed source service, mm. and it but still it was still integrated into uh, Firefox. <clears throat> you had this little pocket icon on your. Uh, main main bar and now it's going to be part like, fully of uh, one of the Mozilla projects and they are uh, looking into open sourcing or everything so that's a very neat that's thing good. yeah so, I'm not, I'm, you gotta tell I'm not me I mean I'm, is pocket anything more than I, I'm not this I'm genuinely curious because I've never used it it looks like a glorified bookmarking app uh, it is some kind of a bookmarking app, but it also does this whole formatting thing. So if you uh, pocket a link from a, a news website, <clears throat> you'll get the content, but without the, the ads and all the the stuff that's yeah. around the news site. You only just a, get the news. Yeah, mm. yeah it's a, there used to be a service like this. Uh, I think Evernote would let you do something similar to this a while mm. back where you can literally just save a local copy of the website in a readable format that you could push to your phone, like Strider said. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's, like, it's more than just the bookmarks. It's, it's a bit more than, than just... Uh, it's not like just delicious or something like this. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, so there, there is this uh, French uh, alternative to Pocket, which is called Wallabag. And I've read this uh, reaction from the... Uh, Wallabag owner and for- founder, and he was a bit surprised that it was Mozilla that was buying this. And he says, "Okay, this is cool. They are open sourcing um, a pocket, so this is a good thing." Um, he was not just sure that it could run everywhere like Wallabag does. So Wallabag is some PHP stuff. So it's I really mean, simple. it kind of makes sense that Mozilla would acquire Pocket because ain't nobody else gonna touch that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I mean, we don't know yet how how it's done. We don't know. So he said the the Wallabag founder said it. Uh, yeah, I don't think it will run on a Raspberry Pi. Well, challenge accepted. I'm pretty sure this kind of stuff. Can run on. Uh, well, I mean, go to Mozilla. Hopefully, they'll do something with it, and it won't be a dead project in twelve to eighteen months. Moving on, um, Nvidia had something to say at the. Uh, oh yes, yes they did, and it may or may not be controversial. We will see in the coming weeks. So this is the unveiled GTX 1080 Ti, and it's available um, uh, the week of March fifth for six ninety nine. That's seven hundred bucks. And uh, you might be saying, okay, so 700 pucks, that's very close to what the 1080 was actually priced at originally. Well, they, uh, they're they dropping the price of the 1080 as well. But let's get into, uh, there's a lot of stuff with the, um, the specs that we need to talk about. CUDA cores, it has the exact same amount as the uh, Pascal Titan X, uh, the same texture units. It has... Um, Eight less ROPs. That's just disabled one ROP unit. Uh, the boost clock goes up to close to sixteen hundred megahertz. Uh, the core clock, we don't know what a what the base clock is going to be just yet. The uh, it, it's capable of outputting eleven point three teraflops, which is point three teraflops more than the Pascal Titan X. Um, 
It still uses GDDR5 X for its memory, but instead of the 10 that you get with the 1080 or the no, the uh, Titan X Pascal, the 1080 actually has eight. Uh, it gets 11 gigabytes um, of uh, memory for some reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, sorry. The uh, Titan X, I'm getting confused with this uh, particular table. The, uh, the Titan X has 12 gigabytes. That's the one. All right, so... The article goes into detail. There'll be a full list of contents there. And one thing they mention is they disabled one of the ROP units. And by doing that, along with disabling its memory controller and a couple of other things, they lowered the memory bus from 384-bit uh, to 352-bit. But they still claim that they're able to reach a higher bandwidth, a full 4 gigabytes per second higher than the um, Titan X Pascal. So this 1080 Ti is better than the Titan X and it's cheaper. People who bought the Pascal Titan X are going to be mad. Oh, I mean, well, they did that to the Titan X owners when the 1080 initially came out. They're like, what? And they're like, well, the 1070 yeah. was like, what? And that was definitely a thing. One thing to note, there is no DVI port on this model, allowing for a full blower design. Giggity. Um, that's a thing. And like Pedro said, I mean, the 1080 price has dropped $100, putting it in my, like, yeah, I'll think about it after I get done burning all my remaining money on a Ryzen box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing they do with NVIDIA is that they release uh, the Titan GPUs and they, they are the, the be best GPUs for like a few months. And then they release the TI version of their like their fastest consumer one. And that replaces the Titan. Yeah, the, the joke people was for the a Titan, long time. I'm not going to be pissed. I mean, they, they have like way too much money <laughs> anyway. So they, they just buy it to have the best GPU for like six months. And then they know yeah. there, there is going to and be. And the joke was for a long, long time was that NVIDIA was purposefully gimping uh, the, uh, the Titans for the sake of just selling a stupidly overpriced card. And hey, guess what? It's still working. They're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to help um, NVIDIA out since they, they really do some pretty decent Linux support, I know, and, you know, eventually they get around to releasing a little bit of source every now and then, and they were helping out the Qt project and all that fun stuff. So, good on them, but we need to thank the people that make this show possible, because without them, there would not be this show. That's right, and if you would like to be one said pe one of the, uh, <clears throat> one such person, uh, English, yes, no, no, I spent the whole week uh, weekend speaking Portuguese, so you can do so by going over to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the support button, and you will find some lovely Amazon affiliate links, which you can use because Ryzen supposedly is coming out tomorrow. So if you want to get your hands on a sweet new Ryzen system. You can use those affiliate links. It won't cost you anything extra. And we'll get a teeny tiny bit of the money. Those teeny tiny Amazon. bits add up. I mean, don't think for yeah. a second that <laughs> they don't. We're really appreciative of that. Um, what else we got? Uh, we, got we also have the one-time PayPal donato oh, buttons yeah. if you want or a recurring donation. But if you're going to do a recurring donation, go on over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast instead and uh, kick us a few shackles. You may see that our... Um, our Patreon, our Patreon number has seems to have lowered a little bit. That's just the end of the month. There's this is a lot of people. Literally, yeah. not actually, literally the first of the month. So you're seeing it, and really, what you're seeing here, this is not. We haven't really lost any Patreons. I kind of checked, and it's just Patreon. It takes like if it's the same way Saturday, everyone panic. That it's just. <laughs> yeah, it'll be back. By I'm Saturday. a Patreon. I back four shows. This has happened to me, especially with my American Express card. Some because sometimes they'll cycle it and it'll say it's declined when it's not, and when they go back and cycle it, it kicks up. So we're mm -hmm. fine with that, but we need to. Um, Actually, think every actually a just bit PSA. Of a PSA. Don't even worry about us. Everyone, first of the month, just do yourself a favor. Check your expiration dates for your own sake because there might be something important yeah. going on. Anyway, beautiful party patrons, yes. we have some new members to our little army. Yes, we do, Mister Scott Michaud. He actually kicked us uh, at one dollar a week during our last Linux Game Cast Weekly, and Mr. Anthony Marino. Moreno? There's, there's something Moreno. you might not know about Anthony. <laughs> what is? He's and, from uh, Texas. Uh, oh. 
And hey, man, we're not. It's like we're doing this dance, not just this show. We got a fantastic Saturday show, a bunch of live streams and stuff like that coming up. I mean, for just uh, four quarters a week, you get your own personalized podcast feed for all that wacky stuff that we do that we shouldn't record, but we do record. So we don't necessarily just want to put it out in the general public because we're hoping that you won't narc on us. Even last night, Jordan, myself, and the Sandman we recorded a uh, Payday Two live stream. It was a bit of all right, but um. Let's have a slice of pie. Hmm? Indeed. And there's a, there's a company you don't immediately associate with uh, the Raspberry Pi or any of the uh, single board SOCs. But hey, it's Red Hat. And they tell you how you can set up a Stratum 1 NTP server. Because you really need to keep time locally. Maybe? Strider, help me out here. What is this okay. all about? <laughs> I do get why. I mean, I mean, okay, you can build uh, an NTP server, and it doesn't require like internet connection. And like, okay, this is good. The thing I don't <laughs> understand is that the, the the author of this article writes this useful trick has made my entire office far more efficient. How? I, How? I mean, I, <laughs> everyone starts five minutes late. I don't know. Owen Strider said, this is good. And I was like, that's usually what I tell myself internally before I end up accidentally hurting myself from doing something incredibly stupid. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I guess if you needed your own internal air gapped NTP server question, mark, I don't know. Well, if you have a lot of sensitive yeah. stuff running on local systems that you still need t some... Well, if you're running time-sensitive tasks and you need to keep all that stuff running and you need to have an accurate clock, yeah, I suppose you would need an NTP server. This is just but too high-tech, man. I, I want somebody to set up a <laughs> webcam with a sundial in their yard that calculates time <laughs> using that. Yeah, just uh, plug it into your Raspberry Pi and have, have it look and identify the shadow to see what time it is. Yeah, that works. I'm not sure this would be exact to the to the milliseconds. Ah, mm -hmm. it's fine. <laughs> well, let's talk about things no one can get a hold of. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh yeah. So there's this uh, new version of the Pi Zero, which is basically a, a small form factor uh, Pi One, and it's the Pi Zero W. So it's basically the same thing, but it has. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. Oh, and also that's, it costs. Whoa, uh, $10. that's pretty good. Mm. It costs ten dollars instead of five dollars. Five hundred twelve megs of RAM, mini HDMI, micro USB, hat compatible, forty pin header, composite video, rest header, CSI, zoom and enhance camera connector. Looking at this, I was like, man, I want to break up my old three D printer and make like a uh, Pi Cast. And no, no, not a pie cast. Well, I guess I'd call it the pie cast, you know, for Plex and just like put that in yeah. all my devices. That looks pretty neat. But um, uh, how, how much did yours cost, Ryder? So I would get one and I will get <laughs> one. But right now, so usually when you want to get a Raspberry Pi in the US, you go to adafruit.com. And of course, they are out of stock there. Yeah. So <laughs> you can set up a reminder. They'll send you an email when they are back in stock. But of course, just like there was the, the, the Pi Zero before. It oh, took this them one a whole year up. to get stock with a regular Raspberry Pi Zero? Yeah, and then again, it went back out of stock. I mean, they don't <laughs> just stick around very long. That's yeah, I do want to point out, um, Dak pointed out, and I was like, yes, you do need air-gapped NTP and secure yes. environments. So good on that. We are running wicked short on time. We'd normally say, hey, just head over to Linux Gamecast, hit that contact button, scream in our direction, let us know what's going on. It's going to be brilliant. But Frizo writes back a wall of mighty text for the GPL Decline show from last week. Yep. And he had to, uh, well, he actually says he addresses a lot of the stuff we talked about. Uh, the GPL decline thing, he basically wraps it all up. It's something that I feel um, it, it sums up the whole thing. It's just don't really sign the, uh, the gravestone for GPL just yet. There are still a lot of people using it, and my phone is ringing. I'm sorry about that. Um, there are still a lot of people using it. Sure, not everyone's going to need it. It's a very... 
it's a very odd license and it it's like uh, we mentioned last week it's still very associated with the whole software freedom movement and a lot of people still look at it it's not as bad as uh, as Fresno said it's not as bad as the um the open source bad word as it were but yeah he also addressed the fact that the um i mentioned that i changed to using the zen kernel on uh on my box and yeah turns out it is supposed to have better performance when it comes to um interactivity and what have you so hey awesome <laughs> mm -hmm. he did also mention the the article for the new picard release and yes, oh, yes. picard still rocks it's still one of the best programs out there yeah and it was um kind of mentioning that and he was like oh, all right um I'm very much um often edit it up me a handful up, 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 keep it in mind for the next yeah uh, keep in mind mentioning what the project is for that next announcement for you so <laughs> we love you we love your projects we actually love every single one of you helping us keeping this ad free and all this business and we're gonna be back next week but we are out of time so I guess I'm gonna have to say I've been Vince Stone at um, Vince Stone on the Twitter nets plus Vince Stone on the G plus and I am Pedro Mateos. I was woefully unprepared for this uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, and I apologize for that. I'm going to try and get that sorted by next week. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. if you'd like to scream at me at an accounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google Plus. And you can find me on Twitter at uh, Stryker or on Google Plus at uh, plus Mateo Commandum. And also on Nutris.net, or if you want to support a project, there is the, the Patreon as well. Patreon.com, Lutris. So, um, is that capybara flammable? Um, I don't <laughs> know. Do you want to try it? <laughs> yeah, that's all I've been thinking this entire show since I've noticed it. I've been distracted, man. So, <laughs> I say, soak it in absinthe. <laughs> <laughs> Light it up. All right, right at thirty-three. So we shaved another minute that's off. A all right, let me just uh, call this person back right quick. I'll be back. Mm -hmm.